On this episode of Mike Colomeco's Real Food, I'll sniff out some great steaks. It smells sweet, right? With the help of Chef Michael Lamonico, we'll cook up some American classics. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. And also some other tasty seasonal favorites. Every spring, I look forward to this. Then it's back to the kitchen. Those are big patties. Where we'll unlock the flavors of dry-aged beef. That's what's coming up next. That's serious-looking food. I'm Mike Colomeco, chef and food lover. Come with me and meet some of today's most interesting chefs and their crews that work in their kitchens. Real chefs, real restaurants, and real recipes. That's what's on the menu. This is Mike Colomeco's Real Food. If you want to do a story on great steakhouses, let's trace it back to the beginning. We're here at one of the preeminent meatpacking houses in New York City, DeBrag and Spittler, down here on Washington Street for the last 50 plus years. This is where so many great restaurants source their meat. It's all here. That's what's next. It's Mark Sarazan, owner of DeBrag and Spittler, man. No, known you since, I don't know, 30 years, 35 uh, years? Let's not date ourselves too much, <laughs> right? Talk to me about dry aging. Dry aging really is not only a question of tenderizing, really a question flavor. about getting that intenseness yeah. of flavor. That's what gives you that kind of nutty, slightly gamey, really incredibly rich flavor. Marbling, more than anything, is the preeminent determinant of real quality beef. You've got to have well-marbled beef, and you wouldn't want a dry-aged beef that wasn't well-marbled, because then it's going to be very dry. About 2% of it. the parks in the right. U.S. Great are prime. Great prime. It's a very, very small percentage of the overall beef supply in this country. Well, we'll just flip around here. This is meat that's relatively young. We see this gnarly yeah. stuff behind us. This is just... This was meat that was just put on the shelf. Okay. As you see, we tag every piece of meat. We know where it came from, what producer, when it was put on the shelf. Well, let's wander around and see what yeah. else we're going to find in here. I used to get this question all the time, can I, can I age my meat at home? And the answer is no. No. You the way DeBrag and Spickler feels about dry aged beef, those are the keys to us. Temperature, humidity, and air circulation. The home chef right. probably doesn't have the right equipment. They don't have a walk-in walking inside of a walk-in, Michael. They're walking from a 70-degree kitchen. As soon as you open the refrigerator or the cooler you're using, heat just blows in and it yeah. destroys the purpose of what you're trying to do. The reasons prime dry aged meat so expensive is you've lost 12, 14 percent in yep. water. Absolutely. Weight out. Gone. That we and, paid for. And this is going to be trim loss. No one's eating this. This gets no. cut off and it'll probably, the meat will probably get cut three quarters of an inch behind this. This would have to be. Otherwise, this is going to be like leather. Yeah, you would not want to eat this. This you would can't be sour. Either. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't right. be healthy or wholesome. And once you remove that outside slice, the meat is a beautiful color. It's kind of look purplish. That's exactly the point. Instead of being that supermarket pink, instead of being that color that I actually hate, this right. meat is so dark, it's so ruby it, purple. Because it, it's almost like curing. A, it's almost like curing, you know? It's like yeah. getting a prosciutto after a while. You know, it starts to get darker as it concentrates. This is going to be great eating. Come on down. Let me show yeah. you the rest of the shop here. Look at some of the marbling on this. One of the neatest things that you guys have done the last couple of years is everything that we're looking at. You're selling some of the best restaurants in the city. You can also buy this on your website, which is amazing. Yeah. Go to debraga.com, and we have launched a website for the retail customer to their home. Exactly. Delivered fresh. I promise you, you will get exactly the same product that all our great chefs order. Because that's the only thing we have, and you saw it today. So. Same house. We're lucky to have you, brother. Thanks well, I know. Again. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Good time you need anything, call me. Whoa. And uh, I need one of these. Next beer is on I, me. I think I need one of these. I'm next gonna, next uh, beer is on me. <laughs> going home. We'll see you later. I'm walking out the door. I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, now I'm stuck. He's walking out the door with the product. Taxi! I love chef-run restaurants. I also love steakhouses. And often that's two things that are very hard to find together. We've got them both today. Fourth floor of the Time Warner building. Michael is the chef. Porter House is the restaurant. Four years old and getting better. Go in. Michael Lamonico. Dude, thank you. Great to be here. C give me a little bit of background. I graduated in 84, and uh, really, uh, you know, uh, four and a half years later, I was exec at 21. And, and you know what? That was really an exciting time because American food was sort of being discovered. Yeah, thanks to Forgione, thanks to the River Cafe and kind of what was going on. And, and American chefs, a whole generation that worked for French guys that were beginning to percolate up. I owe my bones, you know, of cooking to Forgione and uh, Jonathan Waxman, and, you know, a, a whole group of people who really led the way. And it's really uh, such an exciting time to be cooking right now. Oh, the marrow. Awesome, dude. 
for the bone marrow. It's been, it's been poached already, then just oven roasted, salt, and you just scoop the marrow out of the center with a spoon. I have to say, the menu is only my favorite foods. All of your favorite foods. Yes. The menu. We're having that tonight, boys. That's part of our dinner tonight. Absolutely. You're going to kill yes. me. The diet's gone. That's it. You're going to have to run twice tomorrow. You know, you go to steakhouses, you have these amazing onion rings. Big, gnarly onion rings. You go, how do you do it? Check it out, folks. We're doing things in quantities here, so that's how you do it in a restaurant. Big bowl flipping. Make sure the batter covers them into seasoned flour. Then you're going to watch him toss this bad boy. Watch this mess. So he's got them all individually coated. They're perfect. Laying them down so they're not sitting on top of each other. This guy's well-trained, man. This is, this is how you do breading. And those will become these incredible steakhouse onion rings we're going to see. And then you open this restaurant. It's like really an homage to classic American, you know, chop house, but in a modern way. Talk about what you had in mind for the concept of Porterhouse. You hit it right on the head, really, when you said chop house, because the idea of a chop house was really what this always was meant to be, which means more than a steakhouse. Because old school steakhouse is one thing. This is kind of a modern take. We focus on the ingredients. We focus on, you know, sort of precise cooking of those ingredients. And then it's up to the guest to have a good time. All right, your dining room's filling up behind us. We gotta start cooking. Yeah, let's do some work. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for very having much. us, man. Keep up, Thank you. Keep up the work. Thank you so much. Just wanna go to steakhouse, just gotta go to the walk in box and see what's up. I mean, you can't fake cut meat, right? No. You can't be adding marble when there's no marble, no. so no. thanks for letting me in, but I would, I would have bum rushed this thing anyway. Talk to me about some of the cuts. You can yeah. see the fat covering, this short loin. Look at that dry age. This is 28 day. Yeah, that's. It smells sweet, right? And this is your porterhouse. This, this cut is here our with the filet exactly. and the rib. You got two cuts on here because you're really only going to get a four or five porterhouses off, off that of end. that. We have more right here, which is what we were just looking at. This is the original market shape of a porterhouse steak. So this kind of this tip here is full of flavor. There's meat on there, it's so and the good, fat renders down, crisps up, and it bastes itself as yeah. it's cooking. It's so important because the fat protects the meat in the during the aging process. Yeah. I want this. I hate to say it. My taste buds were formed a while ago, and they were formed on this. Okay. And now, if we want to cut something, we should Let's cut, cut something. something. Are you throwing an apron on me or what? Yeah, we gotta put up top. Come on, yeah, sure. We don't want you getting dirty here. Oh I can't afford the cleaning God. bills. I, this is like grandma style. Yeah, everything. come on. We've got a duck breast. <laughs> you gonna score this thing? That's right. There's so much fat under the skin, and it's critical to score it to get that fat out. And I've seen people make the mistake of of, try, of shaving off the outside and thinning that, but that's the skin. The outside is the crispy part. You want this render this thing down so the fat's wicked out, it's in the pan. I mean, That's you can it. see this pan, you can almost start the pan dry and you end up with three and a half ounces of duck fat. That's right. That we're probably saved for something for potatoes. else. Like <laughs> potatoes. Potatoes <laughs> or breakfast. Yeah. That's right. And a little bit of salt that we just, a little, little uh, sea salt or kosher salt, coarse salt, and a hot pan. And I'm not going to turn it over until there's almost no fat left and it's only crisp skin. We're going to do another dish we're going to start. One of the great signs that springs on the way in our neck of the woods is shad roe. This is the egg sack of shad, which is a fish that runs up the Delaware River. We're just gonna pan fry this, really, and we're gonna serve it with some fava beans, applewood smoked bacon, and a little squeeze of lemon and brown butter. You know, that's a campside dish. <laughs> yeah, at Camp uh, La Monica. Camp La Monica. Now we've got the wonder flour. You get a little texture, get a little something to crisp up. You gotta be careful with shad roe, because it'll pop. It kind of, Pops. it's like making popcorn sometimes. Exactly. If you get a little break in that membrane, stand back. Yeah. And then in the oven. In the oven. Right. In the meantime, we'll flip the duck. Yeah. See how much fat we poured off, really? Watch your hands. Yeah. And open the oven. I'll put my duck in. Beautiful. And you can see now how it's cooked inside. I'm just gonna add a little bit of fava beans to this. Finish the same pan, let them get that yep. buttery goodness, all that flavor, why not? Exactly. With lemon juice to brighten it up. Oh, this fish is still cooking, man. It's still, there's carryover cooking on this. You can see that's just set. Every spring I look forward to this. 
And not to forget our Nuiski bacon slabs, man. And the shad is really quite rich, but that bacon with it is just beautiful. Here, why don't I give that to you right there? All right. You know what we gotta do, we gotta do this. So let's cut open, we'll show how this, what this thing looks like on the inside. Everyone's curious. And it's perfect, it's just, see what I said, like custard-like? Still a little pink there, it's steaming. I love the row of the I've, I've actually fished for shad in the Delaware. It's very, it's very crazy. On fly, on fly. Oh, you're yeah. Hardcore, I, I didn't love say it. I caught any. No, you didn't have to, I love it. All right, let's plate up okay, this good. duck, bro. Chef, we're heading into spring. We got this beautiful duck breast that we sauteed. We're letting it compose now. You serve it with a compote that's ginger and rhubarb. Now, the beauty of this is the duck itself is very full flavored. It doesn't really need a sauce when you serve it with the compote. And duck has this again, you can have this crispy outside skin, then that little layer of fat, and you can see how much of it rendered off. It's just a thin right. layer, so it's unctuous, it's buttery. Pick it up in one piece with your spatula. And I'm just gonna add the rhubarb. I never use herbs in a superfluous way. And this is just some fresh thyme. You wanna go over here? We're fighting over this first piece, don't you? Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. no. Yeah, Cut so, it in well, half. How, uh, I'll share it with you, okay? All right, all right. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, is that uh, we really think of this as a really, we had uh, to get an alternative to beef. If you're not eating beef and you want something really natural and beefy, delicious, this is it. Delicious, bro. This is Beautiful. great. Good. All Good. right. Let's do a steak. Let's do a steak. What's your name, Chef? Tim. And you are one of the two guys that runs this with Michael. Right. You've been with Michael since the opening day. Yes. About five years. So a lot That's of the good. team. It's always a good sign with the restaurants. Filet mignon. On top we got maitre d' butter. Maitre d' butter. Classic. Parsley, lemon juice, salt, pepper, compound butter. Beautiful cream spinach made from fresh spinach. Fresh, fresh spinach, spinach, double cream. We take a cream, we reduce it down by half. And what do you call this particular uh, confection? A little side of bacon. Side of bacon. You know, because you got you got your steak, right? You got your heavy cream and the cream of spinach. Got to have a side of bacon because right. this is pretty light food at the moment. Yeah. yeah, just pick this up. I'll do the shots of these. The martini. So even though it's a steakhouse, we got these big gnarly portions of vegetables. I'm telling you, the first few times I came here, that's all I ate was your side dishes, and I was like blown away, man. Can we see the tats? Got to see some tattoos. What is it? We don't know what it is. It's just it's cool. All right. Because Michael and I have no tattoos, we feel like... I haven't got any. Is it too late? Is it too late? Uh, yes, they turned me down. It's never can we, too late. It, can, we, can, can we rock like okay. a full sleeve or a partial right. sleeve? Sure. He and I? All right. There's, there's hope. The back of my calf. Yeah. That, that's attractive. All right, brother, let's go. We're getting busy or what? We got table five. The name of the restaurant's Porterhouse. We're yeah. doing a Porterhouse. And you've got this broiler behind it that's radiant heat, so the heat's up top. It is hot. And it's about 17, 1800 degrees it at is the hot. top, and you can't do that right. at home. You don't have that kind of heat. Actually, the salt, and we use kosher salt. Real it, fine. It crystallizes with that heat. It recrystallizes. That's why you get that crust. And the flavor is all locked in there. We're going to unlock it now, and there's just no other way to do that but the high heat. You load the grill because right. this is your right. broiler job to do, all right? All right? Here we go. All the way in the back. There you go. We gotta take this out. We gotta let it rest. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Oh, it's, it's like bubbling, beautiful. man. It's insanity. We always let it rest. If you cut it too soon, the juices yeah. will come out, yeah. even in a dry aged steaks. Then we'll carve it, and then we're gonna finish it because that's how you do this, baby. You can almost smell the. You smell it. It dry. It's the smell of dry aged meat. That's cool. Nothing smells like this. All right. So we're gonna carve this now as the fillet comes right off. We're carving it now before it's actually finished cooking. Really, there's an aroma of aged beef that you won't get any with any anything else. You just won't get it with anything else. All right, Chef, so we've got the meat, we've got it sliced, we've got yes, it ready to go back in, but you're going to add some magic to this. This is the kidney fat, and we've cooked it and rendered it. All the flavor is right there. They don't want to waste that. It's going volcanic yet? It will soon if it doesn't. There you go. Jay Zoo. I'll step back, give the chef some room. Smell that? Smell that. Age Unbelievable. All the way. You know, this is why 
I could be a vegetarian for like 48 hours, and then I really need one of these things. The aroma is intoxicating. It's dry aged prime meat, and there's no baking it, there's no substitute, there's no. no you just can't do this any other way no. but buying the best. Right. I'm gonna go right in here, take this cut. Come on, you soup, right there. You got that juicy goodness. Love it. We're not done yet. No, it's just starting. Those are ginormous scallops. Up in the pass. Want to take that? Yeah. Two tables. Two yeah. tables. Two tables. Thank you. Got a clams casino here. Classic, man. I love this. When I was a kid coming up in the restaurant business. I must have made 10,000 of these things. Clams casino, but. These are great. Salty, briny, crispy, crunchy, just out of the oven. I mean, that's like perfect. Look how crunchy they are. That's the way Clams Casino should look. Take it away. He's taking it. He's taking it. He's just taking it. My food. Hate it when that happens. What I love most about Porterhouse is the quality and strength throughout the entire menu. While, as expected, the steaks, chops, and fish were of impeccable pedigree, the rest of the menu shines as well, which is really exceptional. The entire menu shows great thought, planning, care, and execution. There's really something here for everyone. And save room for desserts, all made in-house. They're fantastic, too. All right, we're here with the pastry chef, Wayne Harvey Brockman, who I've known for, I don't know. 20 years? <laughs> we're all gray hair and old guys yeah. now. Talk to me about, just before we get into the specifics, the style of desserts at this restaurant. Well, yeah, I've always tried, tried to be a champion of American desserts. Classics, as bare and simple as we can. Let's plate up a couple of things that we're gonna see later tonight and just have them sure. break them down for us. So cheesecake, we've got cream cheese. Not just cream cheese. We get it from a small producer in the Amish country that's been around for a long time. So they let it ferment so it has a great flavor. That's the real key to, to a cheesecake. I'm gonna put some fruit on that. Okay. A couple of blueberries. There we go. I wouldn't taste this, but if I keep tasting everything, I'm gonna kinda die here. A piano could fall off the fifth floor and hit you in the head. All right, I'm gonna so have So what's this. a better way to go? You talked me into it. Look at that. It's crazy. That's insane, man. Totally delivers on the promise. I don't eat as much as I used to, but I mean, you know how you eat a steak, have a nap, have a Negroni, have some red wine, and then cheesecake. Good Lord, but worst, thing, worst things can happen, right? Yeah, it's a good thing they invented couches to pass out on that. <laughs> right. you know? What is this bad boy? It's a peanut butter banana layer cake. Here's the trick to making this. It's a giant jelly roll. I, I oh. make strips and I just keep rolling it and rolling it until I have a full cake. You know, I always hear complaints to people about the trends today of like, I went to that restaurant, Mike, that you said was so good and the portions were so tiny. I was like, I left hungry. And you can see they're following that trend here at Porterhouse of small portions. Small entrees, really small appetizers. And then the desserts are just like, what is this? Like, um, about a pound and a half of jolly yeah, goodness. Yeah. I want to get out of here. This is just wrong. There you go, brother. Go, go, go. And welcome back. You know, we've got a great dish now. We're gonna do a dry-aged prime beef chopped steak. I mean, this is great. It's not a hamburger, it's chopped steak. And there's nothing. Uh, Mike, <laughs> hey. hey. I was just practicing. You, <laughs> I was just he's like, good, yeah, he's, little, he's great. A little run Mike, you've got a restaurant and a full-blown career. This is all I do anymore is TV. Oh man, so it's a beautiful. little, I just, once a week, they let me on for oh, half an hour. I was just being at home. He is at home, he's great. So he's better than me at this. Oh, all right, so I'll let you continue, because this is sick. My dry aged prime beef is 28 day dry age, yeah. but there's always plenty of trimming when we're cutting our steaks, and I hate to see it go to waste. So, actually, I do this as a special reserve burger in the restaurant. And today we're going to treat it burger without the bun and go way retro into chopstick. It's true, and you know what? Actually, it's, it's actually almost elegant because you're not eating yeah. it with your hands, and, it, it's, and it's a great, great dish for wine pairing, even for some of the great beers that you might want to serve with it. Patty time. We have a, a 75 25 mixture of lean to fat. Yeah, let's go manly with the portion. Yours looks better than mine. It's lunch. We got our peppercorn mix here. Black, red peppercorns, a good spice mix, actually. But just gonna Can put a little this? bit of that. It's a big flavor boost. That's right. Now these are going over to the pan with a little bit of oil, and that's it. 
Those are big patties. Those, yeah. th that's a big chop steak. It's going to take a little time. The other day, a guy brought in an unbelievable bottle of wine. He said, what should I have with this? And I thought, you should have a chopped steak. You should have a burger. Let's just let him sit. Let's go make the salad. Okay, let's make the salad. I love when you can take things apart and still have the flavors that you want. So a tomato, instead of a tomato with a burger on a bun, make a nice salad. We have some really nice Maytag blue cheese. It really has all the flavor you want it to have. There. Yep, that's it. Just, it, you know, and so instead of having a burger with cheese on top and lettuce and tomato, there's, right. there's your, that's your side dish. The thing is, is a good dry aged beef is kind of blue cheesy in its own aroma. Let's, okay, let's flip the burger. Okay, let's do that. May I flip these? I, I think you should yeah, go for it. In there. And a little safety, always flip away nice. from you folks. Very nice. Great. Look at those bad boys. You can see that fat almost coming out of the meat, right? Look at that crazy. Now, the, I smell the peppercorns, but. Yeah. I really get the aroma of the beef. Let's just get some shallots in there. So we're going to let the shallots cook with the burger. Now it's really starting to look good, though, actually. Yeah. What, do, what do you think? A little butter, maybe? I find watching butter melting to be a satisfying Butter thing. melting is good. It's better yeah. than paint drying. It's much better than paint drying. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's go with the wine. wine. So you're going to tell me when. We're going to want a couple of ounces? Yeah, go ahead. Beautiful. Because really what you're going to do now is you're going to let the, the wine is going to be completely dry. Great. Completely dry. Shallots are going to pick it all up. And you're going to have a shallot red wine condiment. Yeah. You know, nothing is going to dominate the beef. Everything is an accent to the beef. I think, tell me if we're done, chef. I think we're getting close to being done here. That crackling sound. Beautiful. It's beginning to dry out. I think we're there. All right. Dude, great. I mean, the one thing TV can't do is you can't get smells, but this is crazy. The smell of this dry aged meat's like permeating the room. It smells great. That's serious looking food. Maybe a little oil. Yeah. Maybe a touch of salt too. Dude, I mean, <laughs> how's that not going to make anybody happy? <laughs> Let's cut into this thing. Look at this crust. Oh, guess what we have? The flavor is insane. It's a pleasure, man. It was great to be here with you. One you of the great it. New York Thank stories, you. New York born and bred. Next time we do this, we're gonna get you out of the way, so I'm gonna go to your restaurant. We're gonna sit down and let Yeah, that'll be good. I would like that, because I'm a big fan of yours. We gotta go let someone else do the cooking. Let's okay? do someone else do the cooking. <laughs> well, Monaco's Porterhouse, great. You can't go Thank wrong you. there, folks. And you saw this real simple recipe, you know, 15, 20 minutes at home, chopped steak, super light, super fast, and super delicious. You know the drill, we'll see you next week.